So to start with FDM, there's basically four main maintenance items for you to be aware of. That's your calibration, your material storage, the tips and flicker brush system, as well as just overall uh, cleanliness of the machine. Calibration is important for a multitude of things, but mainly the accuracy of your parts, the finish of your parts, as well as just the overall build success. You know, if your machine's out of alignment, you know, layers aren't going to be lined up correctly with each other and asking for per print failures there. This calibration step varies by the machines you have. So if you have a Fortis machine, you're going to be doing manual calibrations. Basically, it'll be printing out that square that you see on the right here. Uh, and you're going to be looking for the three tracks of material to have even spacing. And you basically put where that even spacing is into the machine and the machine will uh, take that into account with your calibration. The F-Series line has the same sort of manual calibration square, but there's also a step done before that, which is an automatic calibration, and that's typically done without any material loaded in the machine. You're going to be wanting to calibrate any time you put a new head or tip in the machine, as well as on the Fortis machine, anytime you change materials. So anytime, anytime you have to swap a tip on a Fortis machine, you're going to want to run a calibration. Whereas on the F-Series, anytime the head is removed, you want to make sure that you run that calibration. A little bit about material storage. You really always want to store open FDM spools in a cool, dry, controlled environment. So once you take it out of that initial bag, typically can last for up to six months before it becomes logged with moisture and you start seeing issues with printability. Moisture-sensitive materials may have a shorter shelf life than that. You're talking about nylon materials and things like that that want to take in moisture more than like an ABS. So those, you know, you'll have to take some extra steps to make sure that they don't take on any moisture. So as you see on this picture on the left, you know, a simple Ziploc or Mylar bag with some desiccant material inside of it just helps keep it drier than normal and just tries to keep the material lasting as long as possible. A spool of material that's been sitting in its package, original packaging, can have a shelf life over 18 months. But once you open it, you do want to make sure that you take some steps to keep the moisture out. The tips and the flicker system. So basically all of the FDM machines have a brush system that brushes uh, excess material off of the tips or on the F-Series just off of the, the end of the head. That distance is important to ensure the longest tip slash head life possible. If you're too high, where if those flicker brushes are making too much contact, it can damage the tips and wear them out prematurely. If it's too low, the, the opposite will happen. It won't clean the material off the tips, and you might notice it building up on either your purge tower or, unfortunately, it could build up on the side of your part if it's too low. So just an example of kind of what that would look like if you're you know, looking at your tips. If you're correct height on your brush flicker, you'll notice on the picture on the right, there's not a lot of marring or scratching on the actual uh, white surface of the tip. So it's just making contact with that with the little end of the tip versus on the left, if the flicker's too high, it's making way too much contact and it's really digging into that tip. So making sure that that height is correct is important for optimal life of your tips. A tip should last anywhere between four to 500 print hours. Uh, on a, on a Fortis machine, but if your flicker brush is too high, it could, you know, cut that in half. Just overall uh, machine cleanup. So on the F-Series, these machines will just sort of purge material underneath the machine. So you'll want to make sure that you raise that bed and clean out that material. Fortis machines, it typically purges into a waste bucket that you can take and, and, and throw away, uh, but there is still a chance that some material can sort of get underneath the build platform, and you'll still want to raise that platform up to check underneath and make sure there's no material. The problem you could get into is that on a Fortis machine, if the temperature, if you're going from a low temp material to a high temp material, the, the low temp material that's stuck in the machine could actually melt and stick to the bottom of your surface, making it harder to clean up afterwards. Not something that's going to, you know, directly break your machine or something like that, but it is, you know, overall cleanliness and you don't want, you know, material sticking to the, uh, stick to the bottom of your machine.